Hello there guys, it's Steven here, back with another video on part 2 of the under 18 Who are the next generation of stars, which I started yesterday. If you haven't watched that, go and watch that. Uh, not before this, after this video, because they're, they're, they're not sensitive, they're not part sensitive in terms of which order you can watch them. Uh, basically, in this series, I'm trying to preview with a new whole bunch of under 18s, because this year they basically brought up every under 16, more or less, uh, and completely revamped the under 18s and moved last year's under 18s, who are still eligible, up to the EDS, which I think, in my opinion, is the right decision. I explain that more in yesterday's video I go into detail how the new kind of tiering systems work and how they're basically trying to push younger players a lot earlier on hence why Taylor Richards has already jumped to the under so already jumped to the EDS despite only being a first year uh, under 18 and don't forget as well I am sponsored by One Football, the wonderful people over at One Football. well go and download that app for all the news Manchester City updates your previews your stats and everything else uh, to do with football worldwide because they are good people the link is in the description below but let's get on to uh, the under 18s names the stars of the future and i'm going to start with ryan corrigan if you don't know anything about him he joined from everton about two and a bit years ago i think it was 2015 and he's a bulldozing rampaging left fullback with a, a decent size to him he seems like a very nice lad as well very polite on twitter which i think is always a good sign that we're signing well-rounded people uh, he actually offered me tickets once for a game so thank you very much there because he thought i couldn't get him which is very nice for him because he follows me there so thank you ryan but on to his actual game uh yes he basically he's a powerful fullback he's kind of shot to i say fame city noticed him because he was scoring some absolute wonder goals for everton driving forward with an absolute rocket of a left foot scoring some 30 yarders driving at the hard defense and i've already seen that tendency so far this season now bear in mind as i said yesterday's video most of these lads i've only seen three or four times at max because they're all new to the under 18 so it's hard to draw too many conclusions but i like what i've seen of ryan so far he's a willing runner he's a good size about six foot strong gets forward very well works incredibly hard as a sweet left foot great crossing him and he's already scored one goal where he got a little bit of luck but he bulldozed through Blackburn's defense he made his own luck and then coolly finished he's one that uh, has a very big career in football in general I don't know how good he'll be one day I'm sure Ryan doesn't know yet I'm sure City don't know yet but he's very capable very tidy uh, very good at attacking instincts and seems to be able to defend too one guy who's already excited regular watches of under 18 football is Nabil too easy too easy he makes the football look too easy he's too easy I think either way he's a Spanish striker we got from Valencia after he actually terrorised Manchester City in a friendly once and the City scouts saw him and thought I like him he's incredibly good I think he's got something like 70 goals in two seasons for Valencia's youth team and I've been so incredibly impressed by him so far he's not your typical Spanish striker in terms of he's a number nine he reminds me of somewhere between a confident Edin Dzeko and Negredo in terms of a big man strong Negredo when he first joined City how he was turning linking turning away from defenders using his power bulldozing past people and rocketing shots into the top corner or scoring headers he reminds me of that a lot. The complete number nine. His link-up play is excellent. He has a decent turn of pace. He seems to be able to beat a man with a trick. He scores headed goals. He scored a couple of rocket shots as well. I like him a big lot. I can see why City chased him. He's one of the stars of this team for me so far. What I've seen, and it's only early days, is incredibly promising. He's the kind of person who seems to be an instinctive finisher, but also has the all-round game to be a threat anywhere. I like him, and fingers crossed we see plenty more of him going forward. I'm sure we'll see plenty of him in the FAU Cup run, and maybe he might even be involved in the uh, UEFA Youth League. Don't not necessarily giving the Gonzalez and the Metro ahead of him a little bit because they're older and more senior, but he's got a very big future in the game. Hopefully, it's with Manchester City. The next on the list is Felix Nemecha. Not Lucas Nemecha, the England under 19 and 20 international. Uh, his goal scoring brother, but Felix is his younger brother. Uh, the picture's pretty bad. I got it from his Twitter. Basically, he looks a lot like Lucas. He looks almost like he could be a twin. He even plays a bit like him too, but he's an attacking midfielder and he's a goal scorer. He scored a hat-trick at the weekend. I already saw him score a couple of goals before that as well. He's scoring all kinds of goals in the Ray teams from attacking midfield. He has a very similar play. He has a very strong physique around 6'1", six 6'2", foot six foot like Lucas. He has his ability to dribble past people, drive once again like Lucas, but obviously he's a midfielder, so a little bit less of a striker because he's a midfielder. Uh, more adept at playing in uh, forwards and picking up passes, but he's instinct seems to be to score goals and that's never a bad sign for a player because he needs no house to score him as well a hat trick of the weekend already seen him score a couple of excellent goals a long range in particular the other week really stuck out we put it in the top corner from about 30 yards out uh, maybe he can disappear a little bit every now and then but i can see why he's involved in the england squads already at youth level because he knows how to score some spectacular goals he has a great touch and he knows how to beat a man he's one to keep an eye on we do have some very talented young midfielders in this club uh, and i think felix is one of the standouts the 
Nathaniel Ogbeite is another, as I mentioned yesterday, like Felix actually, he's had plenty of uh, under-18 football even last season. He was one of those players that was tested a little bit sooner as a promising under-16. And he's been playing centre-back this season. No, he can play left-back and in midfield too, but he's tall, leggy, rangy and strong. And he has this great ability to drive through midfield and open up space. He's got such a long stride of him. He's also had loads of England youth appearances too. Very cultured. And I'm not sure if he's necessarily the most refined defensively. I'm not sure if he's even a natural defender. Someone with more knowledge will be able to tell you on that. But he's played there so far this season. Left-footed. Um, and he looks comfortable. He looks very commanding. Though necessarily, maybe not the most positionally refined yet. But he'd probably admit that too. But he's another prospect that seems to have his confidence about his game. His elegance. Alongside Eric Garcia, they look both like ball-playing centre-backs. Both with so much composure. He doesn't ever, ever, ever uh, look flustered in possession. Which is obviously is a prerequisite for any Manchester City defender these days. And I really like the fact that he can literally just drive through the field because he has a very good turn of pace. He has an incredibly long stride. Uh, he looks like he can just basically support the attack from deep. He's another that will stay with the under-18s this season. I suspect maybe get involved in the FA Youth Cup teams, though. That would be Joe Latibodier and Ed Francis. I would guess they would be ahead of him there. But he's another uh, <laughs> a leader kind of player as well, which is good. I think he's captain in England before at youth level. It's another incredibly talented and exciting prospect, basically. I think I'll be saying that quite often during this series. And this one is a bit of a special case. Tommy Doyle. Yes, he's the grandson of both Glimpardo and Mike Doyle. Two absolute huge Manchester City legends. That's one for the older City fans. The one for the main road crew. Uh, and it, that heritage is ridiculous. He's still only an under-16. But because he's so good. Because he's been captain England. Captain the under-15s last season. Scoring goals left, right and centre. Driving forward with a tenacity and pace and aggression and energy. Uh, they've moved him up already to the under-18s. And I thoroughly thoroughly agree with this stance young players should be tested as soon as they can at a higher level and Tommy is a pick out uh, a standout player potentially at youth level anywhere in the country what I've seen of him so far I've only seen one game 45 minutes in fact but I've seen plenty of clips of him online uh, he's encouraging he has this elegant long stride he has this ability to turn that way and this way he reminds me a little bit of a, like a uh, Gerard with in terms of energy and that passion that desire with that pace but with a little bit of a Spanish flair by him, a little bit of David Silva's touch. I know that's a, a hell of a claim, but City rate him that highly, and rightfully so. He's also a leader. He's vocal, he's tall, he's strong, he's fast, he's skillful, he can score goals from 30 yards, he can pick out passes from 70 yards, he can play slide through balls, he can flip the ball over his head one way. Tommy Doyle is a fantastic player. Imagine a better prospect than watching Tommy Doyle roll out at Manchester City, given the heritage his name carries, given the links his family has, and he's a City fan too, and he could he also captains England, and he captains the City youth teams when he plays. He's a hell of a prospect, and Tommy Doyle, uh, I hope we'll see plenty more, and the fact that he's already played with the under-18s, despite only being 15 years old at the moment. That's pretty special. But anyway, guys, that's the end of part two. There'll be part three where I talk about the likes of uh, Bobby Duncan, Kurt Anderson, and plenty more players. You'll see that pretty soon, I'm sure. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see talk about in future videos. Tomorrow, there'll be a preview of the final game. I'm actually away from Wednesday to uh, Sunday, so there'll be no videos on those two games, unfortunately. I'm sorry, there'll be a bit of a gap there, but that's just the way it is. Go and download the OneFootball app, and I will see you soon. If you haven't already, go and watch my band's video as well, because it's really good.